What we'd like to share with you is what we do in the Molly Duca Vineyards to create the quality and consistency of the wines that Sarah and I make. We call it the Marquis Vineyard Watering Program. We developed it because when we were at college, they taught us to make dry grown, low yielding old vineyards is what made ultra premium wines. And for us, what we've done is 20 years of research to create a wine making pattern so that you love the wines that we make. Our vineyard watering program is so exciting that I didn't want you to miss any of the details, so I thought the best thing I could do is draw it out for you. What we found in the vineyards is the grapevines grow in three main phases depending on how much water there is in the soil. All right? So those three main phases, when there's a lot of water in the soil, the thing that what grows in the grapevine is the canopy. As the water starts to reduce, what, what happens to the grapevine is it goes into its reproductive phase and it grows and flowers and grows grapes. And then when the soil dries right down, the grapevine goes into survival. Now what happens is in early spring, right, when there's a lot of water in the soil, what grows most first and most in the grapevine is the canopy. We try and grow the canopy up as quick as we can to be the size we need it to mature the fruit. As it then goes into late spring, early summer, and the soil starts to dry down. As soon as the amount of water in the soil dries below the canopy line and into the reproduction area, here at this point here, the grapevine flowers. All right? So then it actually goes into its phase of reproducing and growing grapes, so that flowering so that it can grow grapes. As the soil continues to dry down all the way through this phase here, the grapevine, what it actually wants to do is protect its grapes. So what it does is it cuts off all of the different growing tips. First of all, it grows off the, cuts off the tips, off the shoots, then the laterals, which are what cause shading in a grapevine, and the tendrils. The tendrils are the curly things that you see that wind around on the grapevine that holds, holds the grapevines together. They all start to fall off. At about this point here, right, just above the survival line, what happens is the grapevine is looking for anything that it can get rid of off the grapevine so that it can continue to protect the fruit. The thing that it does here is right at this point is all of the basil leaves, the leaves that are actually covering the bunches of fruit, go yellow and fall off. All right? As the soil then continues to dry out and to get to this survival point here, all right, as soon as the soil dries to the survival point, the grapevine changes from trying to do everything it can in this zone here to protect its fruit, to then moving into this phase here, whereas what it does then is tries to protect itself, to look after itself. How it does that is by cutting the fruit off and reducing the amount of crop on the grapevine until the grapevine can survive with the amount of water that the big man throws down. This area here is actual fact what dry grown, low yielding old vineyards is all about. Right? So here, right, the grapevine, what it does is that it reduces the amount of crop level from say four tonne an acre, three tonne an acre, two tonne an acre, one tonne an acre, half a tonne an acre. Most ultra premium dry grown vineyards produce around about half to three quarters of a tonne an acre. So when most winemakers talk to you about dry grown, low yielding old vineyards, they talk about it as if it's three different sentences, but it's not, it's one. Because if you have a dry grown vineyard, it'll do exactly what we've drawn out here. It'll grow the canopy, it'll dry out, it'll but you lose its basal leaves and then it'll start to reduce crop. Right? So the dry grown vineyard will always go into survival, so it'll always end up being low yielding. In low yielding, what it'll also then do, the reason why they talk about old vines is because it takes, a grapevine has a memory. It remembers how much fruit it can actually set this year, and it actually sets that amount the next year. If it still can't survive with that, it cuts more off and reduces and reduces and reduces until it gets to the level where it can survive at the amount of water that goes in. So this is the, what we found out happens with dry grown, low yielding old vineyards. What we want to do though is show you what difference that we created in this program to create the Marquis Vineyard Watering Program and the quality and style that we do with Molly Duca. What we want to do is show you the absolute critical point of difference with our Vineyard Watering Program. It's right here. 
We call this the point of transition. This is when the grapevine is right at that survival point. What we do right at the point of transition to change away from the dry grown, low yielding old vineyards is we then put on a two hour test watering. All right, what you're gonna find though is a grapevine at a point of transition looks I mean, I think the best way to do it is for me to show you quickly what it is. A grapevine at the point of transition hangs over all limp, all right? And so it's all baggy. The leaves all hang down and hide away from the sun, right? But what we found is some of the grapevines at this point of tr tra transition actually aren't, right? So what we do is we put a two hour test watering on to find out if the grapevines at a tr point of transition. If they're not, they spring back to life again and show a flush of green growth. Any that do show that life again, we then put them back into, into, this, into the torture chamber and dry them back out again. Once we're absolutely certain that the grapevine is at the point of transition, what we then do is we put an eight hour drip irrigation on. Now this is the point that I want you to come to Australia. I want you to come to the vineyard and share with us. It's a point that I spend in all of our vineyards having a look. It was seeing this that absolutely transformed everything that we do with the grapevine. I had to transform everything that we see with what we do in our viticulture. So this eight hour drip irrigation, what you'll see is the grapevine going from a point of transition where it's hanging down all limp and passive, right? And what it does is it slowly fills up, all the leaves rotate and start tracking the sun again. The fruit fleshes out immediately, all right? So at this point, the grapevine now has huge amounts of excess energy. What we do with that excess energy, um, if you think about it, when I first saw that, I, when I first studied this in my, pre, in my research, I thought that the grapevine would use that excess energy to put it straight into the grape. Right? It took me many years of my research project to find out that's not what happened. What actually happens is here, as soon as the water level in the soil goes above the reproduction line and into canopy, the grapevine starts to try to grow the canopy again. But because at this point here, in transition, we've sealed all of the growing canopy points, right? what happens is all of that stored energy actually stores in the grapevines. It fills up through the grapevines, it fills up the cordon, it then goes up the shoots, up the new shoots, and starts to ripen and lignify all the new shoots. So all that excess energy for the grapevine is stored in the grapevine. As soon as that excess energy is stored in the grapevine, what we then do is we turn the water off again. Right? As the water then dries down in, into the reproductive area, all of that stored energy in the grapevine then dumps into the fruit. As soon as that stored energy is dumped into the fruit, we turn the water back on again, then off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, and we do that right the way through to the end till we harvest. So what happens here in actual fact, very interesting, is right at this point here, you have green, hard, nuggety fruit. Three days later, you have pink fruit. Three days later, you have red fruit. Three days later, you have purple fruit. And then three days later, you have black fruit. So in a space of two weeks, you go from green, hard, nuggety fruit to black fruit to have the colour intensity that you're so familiar with with Molly Duca. The mission statement that we have for Molly Duca Wines is we make wines that make people go wow through attention to detail and commitment or excellence. And we believe 100% that our vineyard watering program is what creates the wow impact with our wines. We talked about the effect of dry grown, low yielding old vineyards, and now you've seen the Marquis Vineyard Watering Program. What we want to show you is the amazing, incredible results. Velvet Glove, right, which we believe to be the best wine that we've ever made. When we made this wine, it's a 2007 Velvet Glove, it actually comes from seven year old vines. We watered it for 18 hours a day for the last two weeks before we harvested, and we cropped 3.8 tonnes per acre. Now in reality, that's what dry grown, low yielding old vineyards is all about, once you totally understand the program. This has been what's been the incredible benefit to us, is understanding how our vineyard grows so that we can make wines like this to create the wow impact for you.